Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are broaching a topic I've never really directly talked about and that is protests. And we're going to be talking about the ways that women's bodies have been used in protests throughout history and around the world. One of my long-term viewers, Alyssa, approached me about working on a video together and actually they helped with the research of the sex and death video, if you recall that one. They were currently studying protests and so we thought it'd be a really interesting topic to explore the ways that women have used their bodies and sexuality as forms of protest and resistance. First, a disclaimer to borrow some of the language from Revolting Prostitutes by Molly Smith and Juno Mack. Women, cis and trans are at the center of our politics. People of all genders experience their bodies as sites of and tools for protest. This is especially true not only for women, but people of marginalized genders. In this video, we're going to be focusing on women and people who are read as women by society. So I'm going to be using the language of women and men in this video, and that's not to dismiss or ignore the experiences of people of other marginalized genders. The examples I'm going to talk about in this video are about women, mostly cis to our knowledge, and also the experiences of protest and people of other marginalized gender identities could be a whole video unto itself that I personally don't feel qualified to make. But if you have any examples and stories to share, please do leave them in the comments. So bodies in protest, what do we mean when we say this? Here we're talking about the use of one's body to deliver or advocate for a message towards an end goal. So we're talking sit-ins, protests, sex strikes, picket lines and performance art. Of course, there are many non-nude and non-sexual ways to use your body as a form of protest, but this video is going to be focusing on the nude and the sexual. So we've divided bodies and protests into two main categories, displaying of bodies and withholding of bodies. The displaying of bodies refers to when the women display their bodies as a form of protest, typically involving removing one's clothes or wearing less than is usually socially acceptable in that culture. And the withholding of bodies is the opposite. So this is when women restrict access to their bodies either to view or to interact with. Before we continue, content warning for sexual harassment and assault, as well as other forms of violence. Nothing will be described in detail, but they will be mentioned, so please look after yourselves. So let's dive in, starting with the displaying of bodies. We're starting with a historical classic, one that you may have already heard of, Lady Godiva. The story of Lady Godiva is pretty much the same whichever version you hear. A noble woman sacrifices her own modesty by riding naked on a horse to get her husband's attention so that he will lift the unfair tax on the town. The story has become a bit of a legend and there's even a statue in Coventry in memory of this ride that has stood since the 16th century. Regardless of whether or not this story is true, the legend has influenced protesters for Centuries. Stripping naked in public is a surefire way to draw attention to something. Sticking in Coventry in 1996, a 28-year-old woman named Angel burst into a church service that was celebrating 100 years of the automobile. She stripped naked except for a furry hat and was painted in anti-car slogans. Outside of the chapel were about 100 other anti-car protesters organized by Angel and she was eventually removed from the service. Now let's move across the pond to New York in 2005. This story involves a then 47 year old Halal Faisal, who is a Syrian immigrant to the US who had recently become a naturalized American. She entered the large fountain near the arch of Washington Square Park and took off all of her clothes. She had no war painted on her front and stop the war across her back. And both of these phrases were written in English and in Arabic. She made several circuits off the fountain before being arrested by the police for exposing herself in public. Faisal said, This is my only way to talk about my beliefs. It's a metaphor. When I am appearing naked, I have disarmed myself from my uniform because naked people, they can never make war. We're going back across the ocean now to the Ugandan village of Apa. An ongoing land conflict between government ministers and local villagers came to a head in 2015. This is when the government began evicting people from a par village by force in order to sell the land to a South African investor. To try and stop the sale of the land and their eviction, the villagers set up a roadblock and the women of the village stripped naked. It's a powerful cultural omen or curse in Uganda to see a woman of your mother's age naked and this caused the minister of land to burst into tears. 
The overwhelming sight of their women elders displaying their naked bodies stopped them from continuing with this project. So now moving on to some examples of protests where the cause is about feminism and women's rights. In 2014 in Zimbabwe, there were mini skirt marches to protest the assault and victim blaming of a woman. A video showing a woman getting sexually assaulted at a taxi stand by men went viral and a group called Katsue Sisterhood organized a march in response to this. They were protesting the current social norms that allowed men to harass women without repercussions solely based on what they were wearing. Women marched wearing miniskirts and loudly protesting the harassment and policing that they face on a daily basis. The march did garner attention from some female political leaders and led to the arrest of the men who assaulted the woman in the video. And some other big examples of protests where women wear less clothing that you may have heard of are slut walks, reclaim the night and femin. You may have even been to one of these kinds of protests. This tactic of displaying women's bodies is used for a variety of issues, not just to protest gendered violence. But that is definitely one of the most common causes for this tactic of protest. When it comes to the protests that are about gendered violence, maybe a more accurate title for the section would have been the reclaiming of bodies. By displaying their bodies in a way that is typically sexualized without their permission, and by being in control and doing it themselves, they are reclaiming their bodies and sexuality. So moving on to a very different kind of protest tactic and that is the withholding of bodies. Most of these examples are some form of sex strike but there are a few other examples in there and this is not the only way to protest in this manner. The first recorded mention of a sex strike was in the ancient Greek play Lysistrata. It's a comedy play where all of the women in Greece withhold sex in order to force an end to the Peloponnesian War. But let's talk about some more recent real examples. The Colombian sex strikes in 2006. The sexual partners of gang members in Pereira, Colombia participated in a cross-legged strike. This was for 10 days to try and stop the deadly violence that was occurring. As a result of this strike, the murder rate in Pereira dropped by 26%. Then in 2011, another sex strike was held in order to force the authorities to pave the road leading to the town. And this strike lasted for three months until the road was paved. The Togolese sex strike. Members of the Let's Save Togo coalition organized a week-long sex strike with the intention to compel the government to remove the current president. However, this was ultimately unsuccessful because of some miscommunication. A large part of people didn't believe it was a strike, but a period of abstinence for spiritual purposes. And so the husband had agreed to this abstinence with the wife, kind of negating the whole strike part. The Star Garden Club stripper strike. A group of strippers who work at the Star Garden Club in North Hollywood went on strike to protest unsafe working conditions in March 2022, just this year. These unsafe conditions included things like holes in the dance floor, broken glass on the floor, and a new policy that forbade security from helping the dancers if they were being harassed by a customer. And at the time of filming this, the strippers are still on strike and have unionized as they've been accepted into an actor's union as new members. And this would make them the first strip club to unionize in the United States. The Kenyan sex strike. This was a week-long sex strike in 2009 organized by Women's Development Organization. This was a mass sex strike organized to protest the political situation in Kenya and as a part of it, they attempted to raise funds in order to pay sex workers so they could also go on strike at this time. It's unclear if that actually happened, but I wanted to mention it because it demonstrates the importance of the affordability of striking. Some people can't strike because their income would be lost. And a story that some of you may have heard of from 2021 when the Norwegian women's beach handball team were fined 150 euros each by the European Handball Federation for wearing shorts instead of bikini bottoms. The official rules of the International Handball Federation state that women must wear bikini bottoms <coughs> with a close fit and cut on an upward angle towards the top of the leg. Wow. Whereas the men who play handball get to wear shorts. The women of the Norwegian team wearing shorts was a planned protest against this double standard in the uniform for their sport. And if anyone knows what happened, like did the women pay up? Have the European and the international handball federations changed their rules? Please let me know. I can't find any conclusive information. The Liberian sex protest. 
the Women of Liberia Mass Action for Peace, or WLMAP, in 2003 organized multiple non-violent protests in order to press for the ending of the country's 14-year civil war. It included rallies, mass demonstrations, sit-ins, blockades, displaying of cultural symbols, and included sex strikes. The WLMAP saw men as the main perpetrators of the violence, and they believed that if as women they denied sex to their male partners, then their partners would join them in demanding an end to the conflict. Organizers also planned ahead and created safe spaces for women to gather and sleep at night if they believed that their husband would be violent towards them. The sex strike gained significant international media attention, and eventually both sides of the Liberian Civil War agreed to meet for peace talks in Ghana. The peace talks weren't going well and the men weren't taking it seriously, and so the women stormed the building. They blocked the entrance to the meeting room where the negotiations were being held and wouldn't allow anyone to exit until a peace agreement had been signed. Guards attempted to remove the women, but they threatened to strip naked. And this seemed to work because then the guards started helping the women to stop negotiators from escaping out of the window. It's really interesting to think about why these different methods of displaying or reclaiming or withholding of women's bodies are used in different forms of protest. When would protesters choose to strip naked versus do a sex strike? And does this depend on the cause that they're trying to raise awareness to or what their end goal is? I would love to hear your thoughts on why you think these kinds of protests happen, especially when they're not in relation to things like gendered violence or women's rights and when they apply to broader political and social issues. Also, why do these kinds of protests happen more with women than with men? Do men's naked bodies have less of an impact socially, culturally, politically than women's naked bodies? Or is it the fact that when you live under the patriarchy, the only way to grab someone's attention as a woman is to use your body and use your sexuality, perhaps? And what is it about a woman reclaiming her body and using her body as a site of protest that is seen as inherently powerful and threatening to the status quo? I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of these things we've talked about and all of these questions in the comments below. And if you have any other examples of protest, have you ever partaken in such a protest, like a slut walk or a sex strike? do let me know in the comments if you have any stories to share that you are willing to share with us. I would love to read them. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to Alyssa for working on this video with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye!